Hi, my name is Kiki Kennedy. I'm a psychiatrist and an assistant clinical professor at Yale University, and I also serve as a member of the APA's Council on Advocacy and Government Relations. I'm here today to talk to you about physician advocacy. What is physician advocacy? The Academy of Medicine uh, defines physician advocacy as the pursuit of strategies outside the provision of medical care to effect a desired positive change in the health of individuals or communities. It's for the primary gain of the patient, not the community or population. And it's also not an expression of a physician's political speech. What many psychiatrists don't realize is that the American Medical Association, in their Declaration of Professional Responsibility, identifies that physicians have a duty to advocate for social, economic, educational, and political changes that ameliorate suffering and contribute to human well-being. Psychiatrists make highly effective advocates. We're highly educated. We're able to understand complexity. We're viewed as rooted in an evidence-based orientation, seen as objective and unbiased. And we possess an expertise that is valued. We're professional, so we inspire respect, authority, and trust. And most importantly, we can speak with first-hand experience. We have patient stories to offer, which can make the biggest difference in advocacy. I like to think of advocacy as occurring at different levels. First, there's the patient. Then there's a community level. Then the state and federal levels. And then finally, there's a global level of advocacy. Patients may have difficulty advocating for themselves. Their symptoms may interfere. They may be too depressed or too disorganized. Or they may feel too stigmatized to reveal their concerns in a more public domain. It's important to understand how Connecticut's General Assembly works, both the structure and the process. Each committee is composed of both representatives from the House and senators from the Senate. It's a unicameral committee, unlike at the federal level where there are uh, Senate committees and House committees. In terms of the process for passing a bill, any legislator, a state representative or a state senator, can submit a bill to a committee. Typical committees that you might be involved in would include public health, insurance, children's, and appropriations. At any point along this process are pressure points where you can make an impact, either through calling or emailing the legislators involved, whether it's at the committee level, the Senator House leadership, or at the committee level when the committee is getting ready to vote, the members of that committee, or at the, the House or Senate level. At any of those points, five to 10 calls to a legislator can make a difference. It's important to understand that you have patient stories to offer that can really illustrate why a bill is so critically important. I hope this video has helped you understand how physician advocacy can make a real difference at the state level. Don't underestimate the impact you can have and don't be afraid to take the next few steps. First, make sure you vote in every election. Second, 
know who your state legislators are. Go to cga.ct.gov, put in your address to find out who your state legislators are, and then three, go to the CPS website and sign up for the CPS listserv. Thank you so much. Be sure you take those next few steps. And for more information, please go to ct.psychiatry.org. Thank you.